Hi, everybody out there in TV land. Welcome to today's service, Cave Quest VBS. What? Oh, that was weak. I got to make up. We have a, had a lot of guests this week. So these are our people here today who are going to be leading us. So I need you, when I say, let's see, let's see. Jesus gives us hope. Jesus gives us hope. I want you to say, follow him. All right. Jesus gives us hope. Now, everybody else, you're not going to sit here and watch the kids do things today. Um, as you well know, at VBS Sunday, these kids need our encouragement as well. So the, up on the screen, you're going to see all the movements to all the songs. So as you feel led to, to address your child's side, Jesus said, let the children come to me. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. He said, you have to be like a child to get into the kingdom of heaven. And so that means being silly and crazy and all the other things that go along with that. And uh, so those things are going to be up there. If the kids are up here doing singing for us and you're like this out here, that really isn't exciting. If you do that, I'll put you up here and let the kids sit there and watch you and do the same thing. So that would not be exciting for you. So just involve yourself as much as possible. This is worship. It's not performance. And uh, so as we gather here, especially, I hope you'll enjoy what the kids have to share with us today as we gather in this place. A few announcements. If you don't know who I am, I am Jeremy Squires. I'm the lead pastor here at Good Shepherd. I'm out of uniform today because I'm also playing Clark P.J. Cavern who is a part of our time together in worship today. Uh, announcements go along these following lines. On the back side of, the, of our bulletin, the youth leave out for summer mission. Today, it's actually about 12.30 because of the time change. Yeah, about 12.30, right? So you're welcome to gather here. We're going to be praying them off as well. There are, Kim, did you bring the lists of, there are, Kim has lists be able to sign up to pray for our youth all week, as well as several kids who are going to Cedar Crest Camp this week. And uh, so we'd love to have you be able to pray for those, and you can contact Kim, because one clipboard is not going to make it around the entire room, I can tell you that. <laughs> I played that game before. <laughs> so keep up with your clipboard, you'll never find it again. It could be anywhere by the time we get done. But see, Kim is the easiest way to sign up for that. My mic probably went out already, didn't it? Okay, good. Um, then... As far as the things that are going on this week, that's pretty much a lot of what's going on. And we have Serve Sunday coming up on June 25th. We'll be installing a blessing box. They'll have non today. That's right. Hey, that's today. I'm a little busy. I don't know what's going on. So uh, tonight is Serve Sunday. That's tonight. So a blessing box is going up. That's exciting. Starting Sunday, July 2nd, there's a whole new sermon series for the summer, for our Serve Summer. It's to be called Becoming a World Changer. We're going to hear from different people every Sunday who are changing the world in some way. Some of those are our own pastors. Some of those are from the outside agencies and groups that we are related to. We'll be talking about things like the homeless and children. Next Sunday, July 2nd, Catherine Lau is coming, and she is a part of CORE. We've sent people to CORE uh, in Haiti, but she's actually coming to speak and to preach. I'll be taking off time during the summer to, uh, to have renewal leave. 21 years of doing this, I've never taken off more than a week. And uh, so it has come time, way over time, to be able to do that. So all summer, other folks are going to be preaching. So that may be really exciting to you that you have to hear other people preaching, like Rick Vance is going to preach for us. Pastor Louise is preaching for us. And, uh, and a bunch of other people, like Catherine, are coming in. I have somebody coming in from prison ministries to talk to us. Uh, Jim Melrose from Kairos Prison Ministry. So all, every Sunday, there'll be some way somebody is changing the world, and you'll get to hear all these different perspectives that go along that way as well. So we're excited about that, and we'll lay all that stuff out for you in next Sunday's bulletin, since it's VBS Sunday. Our other inserts, VBS insert, if you want to look at that and just see all the folks who had a hand in it, we'll mention some of that later on as well. And then our regular insert has the, the various things that are going on in the church and uh, so we welcome you here today. If you're a guest with us and you weren't expecting to have VBS Sunday, well, guess what? Here it is. So it's not our normal service, but we're going to celebrate uh, God this morning as we gather together in this place especially. Kids, are you ready? Oh, that was so weak. Kids, are you ready? All right, come up. Let's sing. <laughs> 
When they're singing, I want you standing on your feet. Go ahead and stand up. Get ready for your movements. Get your calisthenics going. Make sure you bend over. Don't injure anything. Stretch, that's right. Maggie will lead you to the stretching exercises for the entire group. Here we go. All right. Not that? Okay. Get at least one hand movement in. If you do that for me, I'll be ecstatic. Crank it up a little bit. Jesus is the one who lights our way. He gives us hope for each new day. When the world is dark and lonely, His love illuminates. He's the one I trust and I will follow Him. He is the light that breaks through the darkness. Follow His lead and light it up, light it up. Jesus will guide us through every dark time. Follow His lead. What? Nobody lost a shoulder, a knee, or anything like that, so I feel pretty good about that, including myself. So that's pretty awesome. So give me some, obviously we have these joys this week that we've had some great celebration. We had 60 plus kids each night, and many of them were guests. A lot of them were guests, obviously. And uh, so we were excited about seeing so many guests from our community come be a part of us. I'm winded. Come be a part of us for uh, VBS this week. But you may have some other joys too. Anybody having a birthday today or this week? Got any birthdays going on? What? I'm not believing you. <laughs> December. Cookie Monster's birthday is today? Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Birthdays? Nobody's had a birthday this week? How about end of what? 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 It's your birthday? When? when? Saturday? Happy birthday. Very good. Other birthdays? Oh, all right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Hi. Maggie's been amazing this week. Oh, yes. Um, well, we gave them cupcakes and everything. Yeah. So Mark and Louise, Mark and Louise that are very much a part of the huge planning that went on for all this, implementation of everything you see, and make it look like this, with planning for months and months. It's both Mark and Louise Griffith's birthdays this past week. So Mark's up there, and Louise is 
still asleep. Yeah, it's a happy birthday to you guys as well. Oh, by the way, you guys take photos because our, our, our Mark's up there doing other stuff, so we don't really have anybody taking photos today. So if you want to take a few scant photos, send them to me so I can add to our photo um, list. That would be awesome. Very good. Other, oh, give me some, some other celebration that's going on this, this, in your life. How has God been present in your life this week? We've seen lots of these things. We're going to mention them later on. But how about you? Where have you seen God this week in your life? Ethel? Yeah, just enjoying VBS with your grandson this week. They were here every night for everything and just kind of hung out and spent time with us, honorary VBS people. So there you go. It was awesome. Oh, good. The kids thought that Ethel and Lester live here. Did you know that? Okay, well, good. Did you tell them that probably? We live here. That's awesome. Very good, exciting. So I got a new house. Brittany got a new house. She can't even stand up. She's so tired. Yeah, she's got a pool. Pool parties at Brittany's house. That is awesome. You have something to celebrate? I'm moving to my new house. Moving to a new house too? Okay, awesome. Very good. All right. All right, everybody's got a new house. Other, what? Matthew, you're back. Hi, Matthew. How are you doing? That's awesome. So Abby will have a job in Albertville High School in Albertville, Alabama. And then Matthew has a job with the Worship Research Institute sort of thing. So he has a job. He's going to be doing worship studies, looking over data, helping train other worship leaders while he's down there, and other various things like that. So we're excited for both of them. And, of course, they got married, went to Ireland, all that, too. That's already over with. <laughs> Debbie. Yep. Yep. So music gathered last night to celebrate that. All of us will get a chance to be able to celebrate Matthew and Abby in July. So just keep that date on your calendar on the ninth. And uh, so we'd love to have you be a part of that too, Lester. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara and Robert Hall made it back from Alaska, so they were going to be gone for three to four weeks. Barbara got bronchitis before she left. Never got over it. When they got there, they had to leave, basically. So she, they've been in, she was in the emergency room up there, emergency room last night uh, here. Um, and so she's doing much better, but she's doing, she's doing well. But, of course, their whole their lifelong ambition, one of the bucket list kind of things, they couldn't do. So please just be, be present with them, especially. Okay? Thanks for caring so much, buddy. So... All right, so those are all the good things that are going on, especially one other thing, too, is Flat PJ's been going around. He's in Belgium right now. I have no photos of that yet, but he's in Belgium. But we also have some pictures, though, a little closer to home. Um, he's still going to Sweden next month. Um, and he's got some other ones I'm going to show these next couple of weeks. But apparently the, the, the youth decide to take Flat PJ around VBS. So here's some photos of Flat PJ around VBS. He's a zombie, though, apparently, because he has a black and white picture, and not necessarily the same thing. And I have heard that, I have heard that he's going, yeah, T Tiffany didn't have permission to print in color. <laughs> yeah, all right. So I also heard Flat PJ is going to be going on, of course, the youth mission trip, so I have no idea what he's going to be doing there. But, uh, and then Graylin and LaDonna have a bunch, but we're saving those up. She made a whole album of Flat PJ on their trip, so, including videos, so that should be really interesting for us to watch. What? Yeah. What can we do with Flat PJ on vacation? There you go. So there's a goal for you, folks. What can I do with Flat PJ on vacation? Um, so, yeah, there it was, enjoying everything. 
I would prefer at least the boys stand up next. Can you take the boys stand up with you instead, maybe to go on the journey? That's the girls stand up. I would like to be the boys stand up at least. Oh, okay. Well, great. Okay, gotcha. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys are all here today. Whoa, we got Louise. Uh oh. I know. I'm saving that PJ. You are always doing that. Yeah, I'm saving, I'm saving Shelly's PJ. Shelly is up in Memphis, New York, though, for the entire summer, pretty much, and she's having a great time with Flat PJ, and I'll show you those next week after we get through VBS. Stand up, greet one another, make somebody feel welcome today. Find somebody you don't know, no shaking or faking. Stay put, kids, kids, stay. Kids, stay, stay. Kids, stay. Davis Taylor, I'll need some time to get them settled before you start the song. Are you good? By the time you have a seat, I'm going to tell you to get back up. So you might as well keep standing up. You're already standing up. Are you guys ready? They're clearing up some issues. director meeting over here in the corner. Are you okay now? Maggie, you ready? All right. Everybody up. Congregation, kids up.
So on day one, we heard from Sal, who loves to explore cool caves, but he couldn't always crawl over rocks and boulders. When he was born, he didn't have any legs. He had to breathe water. He reminds us that Jesus gives us hope. And we met Clark, Clark P.J. Cavern, and we met him as he is a bumbling spelunker who's learning to navigate caves who can't find his way around. But he did invent his personal fall stopper. Say it. Say what it is. I know it is. I got it from my mom's house. And so we learned all about that. And these and this is the scripture that we heard when we talked about John 1, 1 through 34 and Isaiah 9, 2. The prophets foretold the light of the world. Throughout the Bible, God sent prophets to foretell future events, especially in proclaiming the coming Messiah. These claims would be nothing unless they had actually come true. Imagine someone today trying to make a prediction that would come true over 700 years from now. How amazing that more than 700 years in advance, prophets like Isaiah foretold about Jesus as the light of the world. Jesus fulfilled all of these prophecies exactly. Only God can fulfill promises like that. Think of John the Baptist's role like a preview before the movie, announcing that Jesus was coming soon. John the Baptist knew that he was himself not the feature film, but rather he was simply a witness to tell about the light, John 1.8. Jesus is the true light of the world, we learned, the main event. And we learned that hope is confident patience, that God will carry out what he has promised. And although we, they struggled to have confident patience, God's people definitely hoped that the promise of a Messiah would come true, and it did. We can have hope that God will fulfill his promises made in the Bible to us. Just he fulfilled those promises back then. On day two, Jesus gives us courage. Take courage, I am here. Matthew fourteen twenty seven. Thank you, Ben. So on day two, on day two, we learned about that moths are nocturnal. That means they're not afraid of the dark. We wanted kids to, to know that they don't have to be afraid during dark times because Jesus gives us courage. I want you guys to kind of pay attention to me, so here we go. 
When I say Jesus gives us courage, you're going to say what? Okay, here I go. Jesus gives us courage. So whenever I say whatever that day's thing is, I want you guys to say follow him too. So Jesus gives us courage. Okay, I was weak, everybody. Okay, now all together. Here we go. Jesus gives us courage. Awesome. And so we learned also that Clark was trying to be, he was afraid of the dark. And so he didn't know what to do. And so Clark began to figure out how to put as many lights on himself as possible. And so we wrapped Clark up in lights. But then we realized you don't need all those lights because Jesus gives us courage to face even the dark. For our Cave Quest VBS, we had a, what's called um, Cave Snot. That's what it's called. You can look it up. Cave Snot comes from the top of caves and drips down. And so they made Cave Snot and, uh, and had some door hangers, obviously, about Jesus gives us courage. But it was a pretty amazing stuff. Right, guys? You like that stuff? Slime's good. Slime is good. And we heard these scriptures from Jesus gives us courage. Jesus and Peter walk on water from Matthew 14. By the way, Katie did all of these lessons, and she did a great job with all of our, uh, our, our Bible Quest stuff, so appreciate all of her dressing up and stuff, too. Jesus and Peter walked on the Sea of Galilee, which is actually a lake. Peter would have been familiar with this area. It was the same location where Jesus first called Peter and his brother Andrew to be his disciples. The Sea of Galilee is also where Jesus forgave Peter after his denial. How significant that one lake could set the scene for Peter's journey of faith and discipleship. Peter often took the lead among the disciples, venturing out as their bold, ready-for-action spokesperson. His name means rock, and even though he sank like a stone when he stopped looking at Jesus, he was the only disciple courageous enough to ask Jesus for the chance to walk on water in the first place. Because the Sea of Galilee is surrounded by steep hills, strong winds and storms commonly and suddenly emerge there. When fierce winds rush down from the nearby valleys to the center of the lake, the violent storms abruptly arise like it did that night for Jesus and Peter. The only two men to ever walk on water in all of history weren't walking on calm waters. Remember that. Instead, Jesus gave Peter the courage to follow him out, even into the midst of the storm. And it is the same for us. Take courage. I am here. Yes. What? Song time. Get up. Song, song, song. Give me some light. Light. You guys got up on your own. You're amazing. <laughs> You guys stomp your feet like that? Now let's clap together. That's it. Keep it going. Let's sing this little light of mine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. on the back me. All right, sing this real quiet with me now. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes, even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine.
job. Praise clap for God. Day three. Radar teaches us that Jesus gives us direction. He will show you which path to take. Proverbs 3 through 6. So on day three, we met Radar. Radar is a bat, and bats are pretty special because God gave us a cool way to find our way without light. Jesus gives, didn't leave you in the dark either. Jesus gives us direction. Clark tries to echolocate, which is how bats navigate, being blindfolded, making all kinds of crazy kooky sounds. But will he have courage to go into the dark caves by himself? And will he find his way in the cave where he has to go by himself on a trip? And so he, he begins to learn how to do that as well. Because Jesus gives us direction. Oh, I caught you napping. Jesus gives us direction. Very nice, very nice. And we heard about that Jesus sheds lights on, light on how to live from Matthew 5 through 7, the Beatitudes. The Sermon on the Mount is one of the Jesus' most well-known teachings. After seeing Jesus heal and hearing him teach, many people eagerly gathered to listen to Jesus. They were intrigued by the way Jesus taught with real authority. He didn't need to cite references or other scholars. Jesus spoke with certainty and confidence, covering practically, practical issues that many people faced. The Bible notes that Jesus sat down as he explained the meaning of the law. Sitting was actually the customary practice of preachers and teachers at the time. How cool would it have been to sit down and learn at the feet of Jesus? Jesus began to sermon with a series of blessings we now call the Beatitudes. The promises he gave here may have seemed scandalous at the time. Jesus blessed the kind of people that society would have never expected, those who mourn the poor, and the persecuted. Jesus' words would have gone against the popular beliefs of the time and may seem, still seem counterintuitive to our idea of happiness today. Jesus gives us direction. He will show you which path to take. Proverbs 3.6 Song! Song! Radar wants to hear a song! Yes, he does. Yes. Get back in there, Radar. He was strapped on before. It's so much better living in your world. Cause baby, what you did for me. Clap to God, learn to be the light. So we had a lot of fun during the week, and 
Our offering this week went to Project Transformation. Now, we've talked about Project Transformation quite a bit. We've never even shown you a video of what they actually do. So you may wonder, what actually happens at Project Transformation? We've said that they read to kids from lower class areas, underprivileged areas. They have all these snacks and things they've collected all week for all of this. But we want to show you this video that tells you what actually they do and put a face on Project Transformation that our church supports. One problem, one solution. Three problems, three solutions. That's usually how it works. But with Project Transformation, our mission is threefold. Utilizing one program to tackle three unique challenges. One, how to address the complex problems facing low-income children and youth. Two, how to engage college students in meaningful service while helping them explore their calling. And three, how to strengthen and revitalize struggling urban churches. Three distinct, yet interrelated challenges. So how does all this fit together? Here's how it works. Think of what we do as the three C's. The first C is children. Children and youth in low-income neighborhoods have the odds stacked against them. In addition to a long list of obstacles to overcome, slow literacy development remains a significant challenge, with limited access to books and a lack of summer learning. We know that reading proficiency at a young age is a key indicator of a child's future academic success. So we recruit volunteers from churches and civic groups to work one-on-one -on -one with children in summer and after school programs so that they can become strong readers and excel academically. Beyond receiving individualized reading support, we provide healthy meals, nutrition education, arts and crafts, and other enrichment activities that are led by college interns. As a result, low-income families now have a safe place for their children to be nurtured in body, mind, and spirit, and where they can build relationships with positive young adult role models. Which brings us to the second C, college students. All of our programs are planned and implemented by talented college-age young adults who commit a summer or a year of their lives building relationships with our kids, inspiring them to beat the odds, graduate, and return one day to serve as college interns themselves, giving back to their community and completing the life cycle of the program. Because college students are in a critical stage of life, struggling to find their place in church and the world, we invest in helping them gain a more holistic understanding of their vocation and calling in life. Through experiencing poverty firsthand, learning about issues of social justice in the inner city, and through visiting weekly with church and nonprofit leaders who have dedicated their lives to being in ministry and solving these issues, we help our college interns find that place where their deepest joy intersects with the world's deepest need. All of our programs are housed strategically in urban churches, the final seat. This helps struggling churches that are in the heart of low-income communities build new bridges into the neighborhood and opens new doors for ministry. The presence of dynamic churches is especially vital in low-income communities where negative influences threaten to suffocate the potential of children. Where churches once sat empty, they are now filled with the laughter of children and with new hope for the future. At its core, Project Transformation is about relationships. A unique, collaborative approach harnessing the energy of young adults, the strength of partnering churches and organizations, and the resources of local communities to bring about transformation. Project Transformation. Transforming lives through relationships. How will you connect? So that's a greater piece of the story of Project Transformation. Anybody can go read to these kids. Your background check will take you down there and you can read to them. These kids are in this program all summer long. Instead of being in their houses by themselves when their parents go to work. They're fed nutritious meals. All these supplies will end up going towards that. You see all the snacks. Why we collect snacks? Because they need snacks to be able to be donated, to be able to go towards obviously the kids and their program. Our youth go out and, and they go out and uh, read for a week. Carolyn Hamilton, uh, one of ours, has been going out there and they actually got a picture of her on the Project Transformation website. She was there with her granddaughter reading on their own. I'm not even sure she went with you guys. I think she went on her own, um, besides going just with you guys. That's what we do. Haley Espinoza is our intern for this year that we're, that we're supporting this summer. We've never been able to fully support an intern because it costs $1,500 to do that. So what we do is do our best to collect things and do all that and give whatever money that we gather for Project Transformation up to them to at least help support them. But if you go down there and ever saw that, there's another opportunity to be able to go down and feed all the families. They have a big family fun night comes up 
uh, twice during the summer that we do. And the uh, next one's in July. And so, you know, we encourage you to come be a part of that. I just wanted to put a face on it so you can see that. And all the kids also collected change for that. And the change wars, the boys won the change wars. And so that was it. Oh, 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 the boys won, right? The boys won. Oh, oh. The girls won the change war. It was close, though, because Ryan, he, he took it out. He, he, moved, he moved it around, all right? Or Je Jesse did that, didn't he? Jesse did that. Took it out. It was only a couple of things. Boys, we could have had this. We could have had it, boys. So but we, we had no idea how much money was raised there, but we'll get all that. Plus, there was money giving an offering. You've already given to an offering if you're a member of this church earlier to Product Transformation. If you want to give again towards it, you're welcome to do that uh, as well. Um, you're welcome to support VBS if you want to. We still have some money outstanding on shirts if you want to help us support. We don't, we don't charge any of the kids who come, and three-fourths of them, a lot of them were uh, guests this time. We don't charge them for anything. We absorb the cost. So we spend $1,000 between volunteer shirts and kids' shirts. And so if you want to help us recoup some of that, you can put VBS on your check or go online and do that kind of thing. Um, but like I said, you've already given the product transformation. But if you have it and you want to give, feel free to do it. We'll get it on to them as well. Does that cover all the stuff that we did pretty much? We're going to show uh, during, the, during the course of this, we're going to show uh, a slideshow of all the kids during the week. Our normal things, I'll talk while you're showing it because I can do that. Prayers, prayer request cards in the pews, fill one out. You want to add somebody to the prayer list. Our presents, there's a blue pad on the end of your pew to fill out. Say you were here today to worship God. We had 130 folks come out for our first Friday night uh, doing of actual all this. A lot of our guest families came out, and we were so excited to see so many guests who were there and got to know so many more people doing it that way, which is why we're not having something after the service today. Because a lot of our, our families you know, just couldn't make it, but they could come Friday night. And if you're a guest here today and you came today to see it, we're glad you came today as well. Service. Mentioned all kinds of service things going on. Financial gifts. Give according to what God's given to you. If you're a guest with us here today, then your, your very presence with us is our gift, is, is your gift to us. So we appreciate that, especially. And then our witness. This is all witness. 75% of people make the eight, before the age of 18 make a decision for Christ. If we don't pour into our children and youth, then we miss the opportunity that we have because Jesus talks a lot about that. The amazing things you might hear a little bit later on that we heard from our kids this week are incredible. To hear the faith that they showed, the questions that they asked. Somebody asked me the question, they asked, uh, was there a time when God was not? You know, when was God born? That's the question I got asked in the hallway. How would you like to answer that one to, to one of the kids? They're thinking. They're there. They, they want to know more about their faith. They want to know these these kind of things. And so thank you for supporting VBS so we can be able to do this especially. Let our ushers come forward for our offering this morning. If there's any offering plates to be had somewhere. Does somebody have offering plates? They're probably still in the worship closet with everything else that I would expect. Here. here, here we're going we're to pass the hat. There's one hat. You don't want my sweaty hat. Here. Borrow this hat and then bring it you got a hat? Okay, we got a hat back there. Yeah, there's more of those hats. There you go. There you go. There might be, oh, there's not one back there. Here. Just bring it back, Billy. It's like I put it on. Now that's an offering to be seen right there. Yellow hat offering. Thanks. Yeah, we'll have, we won't have a hat for second service, right? <laughs> Pass the hat really means pass the hat here. What? It is appropriate.
Let us pray. Gracious God, as we receive this offering for the work of the church, for the work of Project Transformation, to do your mission, we thank you for blessing us with so much and giving us so much. We see in the lives of our kids and our youth and even us as adults, your hand is upon us. Continue to allow us to spread your message in all the ways that we can and to give our prayers and our presence and our gifts and our service and our witness. Help us to connect with you in worship this morning. Help us to grow to become more like you. Help us to serve like you've shaped us to serve and help us to go and spread the good news of the gospel like we've been doing all week with the kids who are gathered here and their families. In Jesus Christ's name we ask all these things and the people of God said together, Amen. Day four. We, we, Jesus gives us love. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. 1 John 3.16. Thank you, sir. So on day four, we met a beautiful barn owl named Olivia, a God lovingly, who God lovingly created. If you look at her fabulous face, you'll see that it's heart-shaped. She's over there in the, on the far end. And so it's got love written all over her face. Her heart-shaped face reminded us that Jesus gives us love. Here we go. Jesus gives us love. Good job, guys. Well, on day four, Clark has to be rescued when he gets lost and he falls into a rocky cavern. They have to use a rope and a harness to be able to get him out, which is really, really embarrassing. And he's told that, you know what, Jesus rescued all of us. We've all been rescued too. And so he finds comfort in that at least as he goes forth. And this was a really big day for us. Jesus gives us love was big because it talked about Jesus dying and coming back to life. In his final moments on the cross, Jesus cried out, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands, which is from Psalm 31.5. During Jesus' time, Jews used this verse as an evening prayer before they went to sleep. What beautiful words for Jesus as he voluntarily gave up his life. And what a beautiful prayer for us today to surrender each day to him. Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. Jesus was buried in a new tomb carved out of rock, we found out, from Luke 23. This could have very likely been a cave like we spent our whole week in. Extra measures were taken by the religious leaders to ensure that Jesus' tomb was completely sealed shut. And that nothing, they wanted to make sure that nothing could get in and nothing could get out. You might say that Jesus' specialty is providing the way out when there is none. Besides Jesus, there are at least eight other individuals whose resurrections are recorded in the Bible, not including the many after Jesus' death. God's power, not their own, raised all eight of these people from the dead. And I encourage you to look up if you can't find all eight of these people in the Bible if you want to challenge this week. These individuals were just temporarily restored to their earthly lives, and later they all died again. But Jesus' resurrection was unique, we found out. His resurrection came from his own power as God, and he's the only one who never died again. Our craft was interesting that day because we had heart flyers. I know you got a picture of those. And then also our crosses. You got the heart flyers in there? So there's a hoop over there, and they made paper airplanes in the shape of a heart that went through the hoop. And so they had a lot of fun with that, right? You like the heart flyers? They were fun, weren't they? And also the cross, and it was interesting because there were only, most everybody wanted just two colors of the cross, and they were blue and, you remember? Green, right? Blue and green. It was very interesting that those are the colors of the cross that they chose and picked. And we also did something really important that night. At the end of, of our time together and our closing, which we had every night, we um, used an image of taking a, glue, a, a glow stick you know, a glow stick, and we broke it. It was in darkness, and we broke it, and it, it symbolized the fact that Jesus' body is broken for us, given to us in love, and that his brokenness lights up the world. And we, each one of the groups, their leaders, had a glow stick as well. And so they would go around the circle telling each child in their group that Jesus loved them. 
And so it was a really powerful moment. And at the end of those things, then the leaders, plus the glow sticks we had up here, we put into a bowl of water that's sitting on a table right there in the front. And when those glow sticks went into the water, then of course they lit up the whole bowl of water like it was the blood of Jesus. And we had several kids that came to us and, and wanted to talk about the fact of being baptized and wanting to know Jesus in their life. And so it was a really powerful night for us as we did that. Uh, and gather together for that. And so we did definitely learn that we know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. 1 John 3.16. You ready? No. Yes, you are. Oh! Everybody up? Everybody up, everybody up. Da, 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 da. Hey, can we have a song today? Here it comes. Whoa, 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 calm it down. Second Corinthians four seven. So on day five. Now Ray looks like he's a lightning bug. That's not what he is. He's actually a glow worm. And glow worms light up dark caves with an amazing power that God gave them. Sometimes kids may feel like they're going through a dark time, but they have the greatest power source of all, we learned. That Jesus gives us his power. All right, wake up out there. Here we go. Jesus gives us his power. Follow it was an amazing day because Clark got to learn. He forgot his backpack. Clark got to learn that he passed his test, right? It was good. I passed. 
Yes, it is. And, we'll, and he has to then lead, before he gets his final certificate, he has to lead a group all by himself. And he's really afraid that he can't do that. Will he have the power? It's a big job. And of course, he did, because Jesus gave that to him. And on day five, we learned about Jesus' ascension and empowers his followers. And one of the things we did was a craft that was apparently very popular that I didn't realize would be so popular. Do you have that craft? Yeah, so Jesus is ascending. It's in the cup, and there's the clouds, and Jesus is going up, and there's all this back, and apparently people were playing with that all night when they got home. And so it's really neat that they really got on to the ascension. I'm not sure some adults catch on to the ascension. There are two very important reasons for Jesus' ascension. First, the event marked the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. Second, it marked the beginning of the Holy Spirit's ministry to each one of us. In a sense, Jesus allows us, his followers, to continue where he started. As Jesus went up into the heavens, it says in Acts 1-9, he was taken up into a cloud. This cloud is meant to symbolize the Shekinah, which is the Hebrew word for the dwelling of God. Throughout the Bible, God revealed his invisible presence in a visible way, like the pillar of cloud that led the Israelites by day, and the cloud around the mount at Jesus' transfiguration when he was transfigured. The cloud at Jesus' ascension is a reminder that God is always with us. After Jesus' ascension, one of the first tasks his disciples carried out was finding a replacement for Judas. The man chosen had to be an eyewitness of Jesus' ministry from the time of his baptism by John to his ascension. Matthias, whose name means gift of God, was selected to serve alongside the other eleven. God provided this gift of another disciple to share his power in spreading his word. And so we truly learned that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. Have you decided to follow Jesus? Well, get up and show me. Yeah.
decided, right? Decided, follow Jesus, right? I have decided, follow Jesus. That's what we're here for. Thanks, guys. Have a seat. Hi. Poor Brittany's asleep from moving all weekend. And VBS. And double. She, she came from Little Lambs every day. So she'd spend the whole time at Little Lambs and being the director. And then she would come every night and be with us at VBS. So I uh, appreciate your extra effort in doing all of that. And Cassie, you want to, you want to bring any first beginning of the God sightings and then let some other folks mention anything they want to mention? Yeah, use that. Am I on? Yes, I am. Apparently you are. So there are are two types of people who make VBS happen. The first type of people that I want to recognize are the parents, the grandparents, the friends, the neighbors, the people who walk around Target and pass out flyers. Um, Wayne and Linda aren't here, are they? No. Um, those are the people that make this part of VBS happen. We are so grateful that each one of you allowed us to be a part of your kids' lives this week your grandkids' lives, your neighbors' lives. Um, it really means a lot to us to be able to um, build relationships with them. That's something that we get to see them once a week, but to be able to see them every night of the week has just been a blessing. Um, the second group of people that makes VBS happen are the volunteers. So if you volunteered in any way for VBS at all, if you helped with registration, if you were a leader, a shepherd, um, if you helped in the kitchen, if you'll please stand. Stand. Thank you guys so much for all your dedication. Uh, I do want to point out a couple of people that are behind the scenes that don't often get recognized for things. Um, Louise, if she was here, she'd probably kill me, but and she's asleep. So um, she <laughs> spends that. months and months and months working on decorations getting the craft together. Um, Mark as well, the stalactites, all that you see right here, the youth helped with that. It was a little bit of a disaster, but <laughs> they did help with that, and Mark was the lead on that. So, um, yes, this church would not be transformed without a great team of people led by Mark and Louise um, for the decorations. And I also want to, yeah, I also want to recognize... I also want to recognize Debbie Taylor. Um, she's done a lot of behind the scenes things that she um, doesn't get credit for often. These t-shirts, she spent time at home at night after work putting all of the church names on every single back of the shirt. And she also made the signs that are out front. And that's something that we often don't realize happens behind the scenes. So I really appreciate all the work you've done, Debbie. Thank you. Are you going to hold the mic forever? You're going to ask other people if they want to say something. Apparently you do. At least stand up when you do it, okay? No, no I said stand up. <laughs> he thinks he's funny. He did that all week. Um, so I'm going to kick off the God sightings, and I'm going to let some of the volunteers kind of talk about that. But one thing that I know that we did different as a church this year, and I wasn't here last year, so I don't know what it's been like in the past, but I was, safety is really important to me. I was involved in a situation at a church a couple of years ago where a child um, was deemed, found not, it was not safe for that child. And so it's something that our team, children's ministry team, has been working on since I got here, was to get um, safe and secure check-in, check-out systems in place. And so we did safe check-out this year, which is where um, Stephanie Morsey spent forever and um, Joy Cunningham, who I don't see here this morning, she's probably back at work, um, they made sure every child was checked into the system and we knew who was here um, and who they belonged to and if they had any allergies. And then we when we um, checked kids out, we dismissed in a different way, and it was so much more less chaotic, and there were no surprises except for one night. There was a surprise in the hallway, um, and one of our kids got a little choked up, and it was definitely a God sighting that somebody was there to help. And um, 
because I don't know what we would have done if nobody was there to help her. So that was God was with us at that time. Um, does anybody else have anything they'd like to share? You want? Autumn wants to go. Come on, stand up, Autumn. All right, Presley, you're next. Just get ready. Okay, so me, Presley, and Katie all took care of the preschoolers this week, so we had an adventure. And during crafts... Up to 24 salamanders, all these little salamanders running around. It was definitely fun. Um, So the night that we talked about direction, we were all in crafts, and so, as you know, preschoolers don't always get the sense of direction and things like that. And we had a God sighting by a kid coming up to us, and they had drawn on the back of their maze footprints and then a cross. And they said, and what was the thing that they said? Oh, yeah. Okay, so he said these are Jesus' footprints going to the cross. And to hear a preschooler say that, it was a big God sighting for us because realize, we realized they were actually, like, getting it. And they were, so it was really cool. Amazing. Really awesome. cool moment. You'll be fine. Talk in the microphone. Turn around. What if I'm, what if I'm too loud? Am I too loud? I'm not? You're okay. not too loud. You can talk in a normal voice. Don't hold down. What? Talk normal. Talk normal, person. I am talking normally. That's good. Then. Hold it like that. You'll be all right. Okay. May I hold it for you? No. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm only, well, I'm about to be a junior in high school. And a lot of my friends that I'm surrounded by, they all know what they want to do, and they're my age, and they all, my best friend in the whole world wants to be a cosmetologist. She's known basically since she was 10, and I never knew what I wanted to do. I danced, but I really wasn't that good at it, and um, I love to write and take pictures and all that. In the past couple months, I've been asking God to, like, show me what he wants me to do with my life, and, like open up, whatever, and I was like, you know what, just do whatever you want with me, like, I'm ready, and I love to write, and I love to dance, and whatever, but this week, I was here, and I've never really been a big fan of kids, you know, they're loud, and whatever, (laughs) but um, I was here this week, and I had just one kid that was just amazing, just opened my eyes completely, and so... Now I've been really thinking about it and I think that I'm going to go on the path of like children's ministry and teaching. (laughs) That's all. (laughs) Thanks, Presley. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Anybody else want to share? I want to thank Maggie and her team. Hannah did music for the first time. Hannah, stand up. Hannah did music for the first time. So that's pretty awesome. To them? Yeah. Um, If you want your kid, so this is skipping ahead. If you Um, want your kid. No, we know you want them back, but if you want to leave them with us for the Sunday school hour, um, speaking of that safe check-in, check-out, just let, leave them on the stage, and we'll gather them and take them upstairs. And if you do want to take your child after the service is over, come up to the stage and get them. And we'll just keep, leave them right here just so they stay safe. We were thinking about that. That's safety first. Last minute. So one of the things that you got, well, Stephanie gets the Golden Mike Award. She was in charge of making sure everybody changed classes on the right time. So that can be a big deal, trying to get everybody back in again. We had so many folks helping out. One of the, we heard, every night we gathered together for God's sightings. And of course, everybody, they won't won't get up here and say anything. I wish I wrote them all down. But um, one of the things somebody said was their their child had gone to four different VBSs. They've been to VBS every week, the entire month. And they said, out of all four VBSs, one of them, the kid didn't want to go back to. They said that this child wanted to come back here every night and was their favorite VBS. What that says to me, it's not about the decorations or anything. It's about the people. It's the relationships. People heard, you know, I I watched all these volunteers throughout the whole week just love on kids everywhere they went, everything they did. So I want to give a round to all the volunteers who helped out, especially the leaders who were there in the trenches every night. And especially to all these guys. These guys will, by the time they've come to late service, will have done this three times to be able to show you what they learned. And they're worn out. 
we know. So clap to you guys. And for our benediction, I want you to, after I say each one of the, the posters in the back, each one of our five things, I want you to say, follow him. That's going to be our benediction, okay? You got it? You ready? Jesus gives us hope. Jesus gives us courage. Jesus gives us direction. Jesus gives us love. And Jesus gives us his power. All right, stand up, close us out. Have a great day. Let Jesus be the light.